IVPN, the Witch Video Blog Network, home to weekly NFL predictions. Great personality profiles, great professional wrestling video blogs, great sports video blogs, great MBTA video blogs, and a whole lot more. Collection of my work goes back to June of 2014 on various social media websites. IVPN, the only video blog on the internet that matters. Time now is 8:13 in the evening, Belwick, Massachusetts. On Thursday, April 27, 2017, about 49 degrees out, cloudy still, but when daylight happens, the clouds will finally break through, and the temperatures are going to shoot up into the 70s tomorrow, and maybe 80 on Saturday. Which is good news. Some news to report on the RVBN news. Why do 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 from May eighth through May twenty first, the MBTA is going to have free rides of the Fairmont branch of the MBTA going from South Station to Fairmont. This cuts through um, the city of Boston. This just to um, boost ridership for the line. This should be a great idea. They, they should take two weeks for the rest of the year and you could ride um, say like two weeks for the Providence line and two weeks for the Framingham Worcester line and two weeks for the Middleborough line and two weeks for the Plymouth line and two weeks for the Greenbush line and two weeks for the Needham line and two weeks for the Franklin line and two weeks for the Fitchburg line and two weeks for the Lowell line and two weeks for the um, Haverhill line and two weeks for the Newburyport Rockport line. I bet the T wouldn't like that, but it's just to promote it, but do it t two weeks um, for a different line for the rest of the year. That could get it boost up. Also, um, Jim Tomey has signed with the MLB Network, and he's going to be an analyst on MLB Tonight. And ESPN has laid off more um, broadcasters, including Mark. May and three cute leggy blondes, Jamie Siren, Jade McCarthy, and Britt um, Murph Mc McHenry. And that's sad, but they'll bounce back. And that's about it on news from the RVBN News. Why do 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 be back in a flash with my third and final video blog subject tonight, which will be about the MB will be a, um, about the MSG House Show Card Review from November 26th, 1988. But first, these messages tomorrow on RV. RVBN. Three more video blogs for your entertainment. First video blog will be about the top 10 greatest Greek Americans of all time, in my humble opinion. Second video blog of the day will be about why ESPN is probably going to get out of covering Major League Baseball when their contract expires in the year 2021. And the third and final video blog of the night will be about the MSG Health Show card review from December. Um, 30th, 1988, which will end me covering MSG House Show card for the WWE foot at this time, but it'll be back in May when, when I cover 1989. And coming in May, great video blogs, including former New England staples of stores like Jordan Marsh, Ames, and Filing's Basement. Stay tuned. I'm back. My third and final video blog subject tonight is about the WWE House Show Card Review from the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden, on December, and no, on November 26th, 1988. The main event for this evening was Hulk Hogan facing off against the Big Boss Man, plus other exciting matches. This was televised live on the MSG Network by, called by, uh, Rod, Rod 
Tron God, Lord Alfred Hayes, and Superstar Billy Graham. Sadly, this is Superstar Billy Graham's last appearance as a WWE announcer. He was fired shortly after because he sucked as an announcer. And here were the matches that took place on this card. The first match was Barry Hollett facing off against Leaping Lanny Poffo. And this was a competitive matchup. Lanny Poffo won with a sunset flip for the one, two, three. Uh, the next match was Paul Roma of the Young Stallions facing off against Mr. Perfect. Mr. Perfect wins this one pretty easily with the Perfect Plex. Afterwards, Mr. Fuji announced that he now manages Powers of Pain. And Paul Roma attacks Mr. Fuji, but Powers of Pain, Warlord and Barbarian attack. Paul Roma beat him up. And he was taken out of the ring on stretcher. He did a stretcher job on this night. The next match was the mighty Hercules facing off against the million dollar man Ted DiBiase with his bodyguard Virgil. Ha ha ha! Money, 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 money. Everybody has a prize. Everybody's gonna pay. Cause the million dollar man always gets his way. Some might cost a little, some might cost a lot, but I'm the Million Dollar Man, and you will be bought. <laughs> this was a con continuation of um, the Million Dollar Man and Hercules feud, a, a decent match. Ending had Virgil distract the referee, and when um, Hercules, Hercules was going for it in the full Nelson. Million Dollar Man <laughs> hits Hercules with a fallen object, throws it away, and then he pins Hercules. One, two, three. The referee didn't see it, so it's legal. Afterwards, Hercules clears the ring of the M Million Dollar Man and Virgil. The next match was SD Special Delivery Don Jones facing off against the African Dream Akeem with the Reverend, no, with Slick. And this match was a total squash. Akeem wins pretty easily with a splash. SD Jones does the JLB at the MSG. The next match was for the WWE Tag Team Championship. It was the Powers of Pain Warlord and Barbarian facing off. With Mr. Fuji facing off against Axe and Smash of Demolition, who they did the infamous double switch at Survivor Series 1988. The Demolition was full-blown faces, and it got a huge pop. It lasted about six minutes. All four wrestlers won the ring. Fuji interferes, uses a cane. Referee throws this match out, so both teams are disqualified. And Demolition keeps the titles because you can't lose a match to a double on a disqualification. Can't lose a title on a disqualification. The next match was I and Mike Sharp. Facing off against Nikolai Volkov. Both were heels, but um, Nikolai was kind of playing the de facto face. He beats Iron Mike Sharp with a roll up. The next match was Tito Santana Ariba facing against his longtime arch rival, Greg the Hammer Valentine. Before the match, um, the Hollywood f fashion plate, Kalassi Freddie Britt Lassie, was introduced into the lane. Um, um, Glassy wanted to shake Greg the Hammer Valentine's hand, but the Hammer said no way. And this was a decent match by two longtime rivals, but it went to the time limit draw when Tito was going for the figure four leg lock. Actually, the match only lasted about 18 minutes, even though this was a 20 minute 20 minute time limit draw. When there's time limit draws in wrestling, sometimes they go to full 20 minutes or they're greatly exaggerated. The next match was for the WWE Women's Championship. It was the challenger, Sensational Sherry, facing off against the new champion, Rapid Rockin' Robin. Rockin' Robin, Splatherza in wrestling, Sam Houston, and Jake the Snake. 
Robbins, trust me, trust me, trust me. Rockin' Robin retains the WWE Women's Championship by pinning Sherry for the one, two, three, with a roll up. And then the main event was Hulk Hogan facing off against the big boss man with his manager slick in his corner. Hogan and Bossman's feud started on TV at the Brother Love show when B Brother Love said Hogan needed protection and he brought the big boss man Slick in and Hogan got handcuffed to the barricade and this was an awesome match. Hogan wins by count out when he um, when he ties Big Boss Man handcuffs him to the up uh, to the ring ropes, and then afterwards Slick tries to interfere, but Hogan beats him up, and Big Boss Man gets the key, and he and he and Slick hightail it out of there. And this Madison Square Garden house show card was a solid B, and that's about it on that. I'll be back. Tomorrow, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Google Plus with three more video blogs for your entertainment. I keep calm, everybody. I'm a Julie Button guy. Was mentioned on Julie Broughton's Facebook chats at 7 p.m. again. Julie is awesome. She's got the nicest legs in Orlando, Florida. And I'm going to meet her one of these days. I'm going to do an interview with her on my video blogs. It's going to happen. I know it's going to happen. Molly Roseblatt of WCCL Rocks and has nice legs. The best legs in the Twin Cities in Minnesota. Molly's another lady I would love to interview for my video blog. She'll probably going to be the next one I do when I do Julie. But it's going to happen. Elizabeth Hart of Ready, Set, Renovate um, is so, so awesome and stunning. She's got the second best legs in Orlando, Florida. Amy Sweezy's awesome, awesome. Amy Linden Church of WPIX Channel 11 New York. Such a Cougars got the best legs in New York City, Panaman. Bob Gives of ABC 11 has a sweet southern accent. Best legs in Raleigh, North Carolina. Michelle Beadle of ESPN Sports Nation and NBA Countdown Rock. She's got the best legs on ESPN by none. I'm happy that keeping Michelle Beadle because if they got rid of her, well, I would never watch ESPN again. And in the words of Deep Talbot, last week, no bye-bye.